Hello and welcome to the Invader Historical Foundation YouTube channel. I'm Jonathan Claiborne. This video is on behalf of the Aviation History Research Network. And in this video, we're going to be talking about using paint as a forensic analysis tool. I uh, wanted to get one last video out before the end of the year. So I thought I'd wrap this video up. I've been working on forensic analysis and paint. Um, so here we're going to dive into different ways that researchers can use paint as an analysis tool. First, I wanted to talk about how paint can be used to ID a unit or an aircraft two-way unit and match it in those kind of things. Uh, most people who are aviation aficionados already understand that there are group wing and even squadron specific markings that are applied to planes. And that's certainly helpful in IDing an aircraft. But to be clear, that's not what I'm talking about here. That's an obvious a way to ID a unit. Uh, as an example of what I'm going to discuss, I was presented this photograph with the ID of, or with some nose art of a B-25 Mitchell. The person who showed the picture had no knowledge of the plane, no crew details, no theater of operations, no unit information, literally nothing. Could have been any B-25 from anywhere in the world during World War II. And we were trying to find information on this plane. So in looking at the photo, I noticed that in the corner was the small corner of a shark mouth motif, which was my first clue. Shark mouths, however, are perhaps the single most common theme painted on aircraft, and several B-25 units bore the shark mouths as part of their paint scheme, so that wasn't necessarily an immediate help. One thing that researchers should be aware of is that whenever an entire unit is painted up in the same way, such as all of them having shark mouths, uh, there's often one or two crew members who are charged with painting those planes. And usually it's those that have the best artistic ability. Uh, and sometimes they would create stencils for more complex patterns, such as unit insignia. But even in the cases where no stencils are used, the planes all have a very similar style. Thus, although the shark mouth is very popular, the style and the look and feel of the shark mouth is almost always unique to that squadron or that group or that unit. So from the shape of the shark mouth that's in the photo, the curvature of the lips, the shape and the number of teeth, all of those things combined together are very telling and can be used to narrow down the plane to a specific unit. In the case of this B-25, I was able to narrow it down to a specific bomb group because the group shared design and stylistic elements with the photo in question. And searching for photos of that unit in particular, I was able to identify the squadron and find another photo of the entire nose art piece, along with the details of the rest of the plane, including the serial number. And all of that was just from one tiny corner of a shark mouth that was visible in a photo. Some of the B-25 units that used the shark mouths were the 90th Bomb Group, the 93rd Bomb Group, the 308th Bomb Group, 392nd Bomb Group, the 453rd Bomb Group, 458th Bomb Group, and the 491st Bomb Group. The 93rd Bomb Group planes had a downturned mouth with large teeth of different sizes. The 308th Bomb Group planes had a sharply downturned mouth with small teeth of different sizes. 392nd Bomb Group planes had a flat mouth with teeth that got progressively larger the further back it goes. 453rd Bomb Group planes had a flat mouth with teeth that got progressively smaller. The 458th Bomb Group planes had a mouth that curved up with small uniform teeth. 391st Bomb Group planes had a downward curving mouth with large uniform teeth and a tongue. The 90th Bomb Group planes had a complex curve that ended with the upward bend in the corners and large teeth that got progressively smaller. 
this is the style that matches the glimpse of the corner that we can see in the photo. In narrowing down on the 90th Bond group, I was able to ID the plane as Air Pocket serial number 4449479, nine, which was assigned to the 319th Bomb Squadron based out of Manila, Luzon, and then part of the 7th Air Force. This particular plane was condemned in an accident that was not combat related on the 2nd of September, 1945. Now, another thing I want to talk about in regards to paint is plane differences. In contrast to the point that I just made, although things may be the same stylistically, there are often key details that are different between specific planes within a group, even of the same unit. For example, these A-26 invaders both bear a tiger face painted on the nose. However, close examination of the details of those faces reveal that the planes are, in fact, not the same. They undoubtedly belong to the same unit, as evidenced by the stylistic interpretation of the tiger face, but they represent two different unique airframes. Here we can look at the shape of the eyes, the location of the guns in relation to the eyes, the number and location of the teeth, the number and angles of the whiskers, the shape of the ears, and in comparing all of these features, we can see that they do not match each other. And once that pattern is established, the photos can be grouped and sorted into specific collections that are for specific planes. So this photo set belongs to plane one, and this photo set belongs to plane two. And this can lead to more accurate analysis for further details in some cases. I have talked about this in the IHF channel, but it's worth mentioning again here, when comparing new photos against existing photo sets, it's always a good idea to pay attention to the details. Small details can be used as a means to positively ID an airframe. Airframes will suffer damage and repair in unique ways, and the wear pattern of aircraft is also unique, much like a fingerprint. In this example, the photos were presented of a B-26K crash in Vietnam, and no details were provided with the photos. Thorough analysis of the photos and comparisons to the rest of my collection I was able to match this off-color patch on the starboard engine cowling to another photograph and confirm the ID of the plane, one of only two that was known to have crashed. So it helped that I had a small data sample to work with, but that particular patch on the starboard cowling was unique to that plane, and since it's visible both in the photo of the crash plane and in the photo of the plane in the hangar, I can confirm that those two planes are in fact the same. In this photo, which was sent to me by one of the curators at Davis Moth and Airmark, uh, he shared the photos with me that he found in his archive but a lot of the photos didn't have any details of the planes. And so other than being able to say a general time frame and the airframe type, he wasn't able to give me any additional details. I was able to compare the wear pattern on the nose of some of these planes and match them up with other known examples in my archive and positively ID them for him. This photo shows planes going to on mark for a conversion to K models. The closest plane to the camera is serial number 4435685, which became K model 64176588, which later returned to Pima. And we know this because we can see the buzz code on the foreground plane. The orange colored plane in the background matches 4435608 which became K model counter invader 64176660, which also later returned to Pima. We can tell that because the orange plane is the only orange plane that was sent to Onmark and is also visible in this photo at the Onmark facility. These next two photos were provided by the curator at Davis Monthan 
and he assumed that they were the same plane. And in comparing the wear pattern on the nose, both looking by the guns here and by the access hatch here, we can confirm that they are in fact identical. Through process of elimination, I was able to make an ID on this airframe as 6417657. And in comparing that with another known photo that I have of 657, we can see that these scratches here do match perfectly with the photos that I have, thus confirming the ID of this plane. In these photos from Korea, I was able to use the wear pattern and the patchwork on the nose to confirm the identity of this plane as by comparing multiple examples from different photo collections. I've also been building a database of specific camo patterns on specific planes as a means to ID or narrow down the planes and photographs as well. Planes with hand-painted camo patterns also have unique patterns that can be used to ID them. This is not the case for modern aircraft that are factory painted, but any hand painted aircraft, this is true. The shape and the location of the different pieces of the camouflage will all be slightly different from plane to plane, and they can be used as a means to positively ID or at least narrow down a plane to one of a handful of specific uh, serial numbers. The big takeaway here is just remember is that even in cases where the paint screams are nondescript or nearly identical, the wear patterns never are. They may be similar due to the shape of the airframes and the way that the air flows over the frame, but the exact pattern will never be identical. These little details can be a very powerful tool in the researcher's toolkit in helping to identify which planes are which in photos. So I hope that you found this video informative. Until next time, thanks for watching.